basically, uh, I was like every other farmer in the countryside, was farming conventionally, beef farmer, finishing my cattle, uh, grazing in the summertime on a set stocking basis, uh, putting them in sheds in the wintertime, making lots of silage, feeding concentrates, etc. In 2001, I was lucky enough to go to New Zealand and saw some uh, low-cost beef production systems. Frankly, our beef system wasn't making any money. Uh, there was no way forward for it, so we had to find a new or different way to do it. And what we did was we implemented, we, over the last few years, we've been implementing a new system. We started it off by, first of all, trying to solve winter. Winter was an extremely costly process, the main cost being in disposing of the slurry, tractor, machinery, time, labour. So what we did was we moved to an outwintering system and we are using a New Zealand, what is loosely based on New Zealand system. We grow kale, which the cattle graze in situ. We then uh, we cut the same field for silage first of all, put the bales in position. The only thing that goes into the field in winter time are the cattle who are in there all the time and me to move the electric fences and we strip graze it and we take the ring feeder to the bale, not the bale to the ring feeder. So um, what we do with the, with the beef cattle is they're in groups, usually between 65 and 75. Uh, we have our fields now all split up into paddocks. Um, they're not split up into permanent paddocks. What they're done is, what, the way we do it is we split them up into lanes. And uh, what we have is we have a point, uh, two posts, we have color coded. Each paddock is roughly 0.55 to 0.6 of a hectare. And at the moment we have 42 paddocks. And we have two groups of cattle travelling around those paddocks in roughly a 20 day rotation. Sometimes it will go up to 24 days, sometimes it drops down to about 16 days. And what we're aiming to do is we're aiming to get our cattle to go into those swords at the optimum grazing height, which to me is between 10 and 15 centimetres. And we measure our grass, very simple process, we use a welly boot. We, I have my welly boots marked and it's a portable uh, facility that I can carry around with me. And I have my welly boots marked with the different heights. In early spring, we want to take the grazing sward really, really tight. Because there's a well-known fact that if you graze grass, if you don't graze it hard in the springtime, your grass production reduces. And what I'm basically trying to do is to get the grass, to I want the highest quality grass for my stock because I want maximum performance for grass. That's really my real time when I'm really going full pelt. I need to be going full pelt at that. So um, we're aiming at the moment, this time of year, we're aiming to come out about six to seven centimetres. Uh, in the springtime, we'll be down to three or four centimetres, trying to graze it really tight. And what we're basically trying to do is extend the grazing system, keep high quality grass the whole way through the season. If I have to bring the topper into a field, basically I'm admitting that I have my grazing system all wrong and my grass has got out of control of me and I'm not managing the system correctly. To try, there are peaks and troughs in the grass growth, as everybody knows, and what we do is to take those peaks out, we'll take paddocks out of the system and just bale them and wrap them. This year so far we've baled three paddocks, one and a half hectares roughly, so maybe slightly over, and we took 18 bales off that. Not an awful lot, but those bales, we were not making silage to produce bales of silage, we were making silage to make sure to maintain the grass quality. So that as the season goes on, the grass quality maintains the whole way through, and then I'm able to keep my grass running at optimum performance. So this year my cattle are running so far, the best ones are running at two and a quarter kilos daily live weight gain uh, per animal. Uh, the worst ones might be down at about 0.65, uh, but there might be some other issues going on there. We've certainly been talking to the vets recently about some possible deficiencies and we've just experimenting, we've just bolused some and we've just drenched some with a high mineral uh, drench and see if that will make a difference. We try to keep our system as simple as possible. Any time in the past when I've made it complicated, something else always goes wrong. Uh, they were meant to be outside. Nutritionally, they will manage themselves. We put roughage into the kale. We do give them silage or we give them uh, haylage in the uh, winter time uh, in the form of the silage which you see in the bales. Um, and that's purely to put some roughage into the diet. Um, there are times, there's no doubt, when our grass is really at full pelt 
and it's very lush and you'll see it with dairy cows as well it's going so fast through the rumen and sometimes you really would like to slow that down a wee bit but at the end of the day I'm looking for performance at grass my weights I weigh my cattle raise as often as I can uh, maybe once every month to two months to make sure that I'm getting the daily live weight gains I can and then once I've checked them if everything's going okay I don't have any problem with that minerals we have a we know we have a cobalt deficiency in this area in Lanarkshire we know that so we have to address it that's that you know there's nothing else I can do about that but as far as nutritional um, uh, as far as putting concentrates into the diet like it's a balancing act between uh, should I put concentrates in and take on that extra cost or should I maintain maybe different growth rate without the concentrates and make extra money? As far as the infrastructure for the grazing for the um, uh, paddock system is concerned, it has cost us um, roughly about £48 an acre to put in the infrastructure. That includes some additional electric fencing. I was lucky enough, my farm has mains power electric fencing all around it. What the problem was that most of the fields were far too big for my paddocks. So what I've done is I've split them. And we've just split them with a single wire, uh, as cheap as we could. We then also, uh, for the water, we didn't bother digging in pipes, etc. We've simply run the pipe along the ground, along the wire line. Uh, and it works out, if I write that down over four years, that works out at £12 an acre. That's what it's cost me. That's my infrastructure cost. That's the additional cost that I've had. So for me, it's absolutely nothing. As far as labour is concerned, this is actually a very easy system. If you remember, I don't have uh, any of the major uh, extremes for labour in the summertime. Um, we don't have any slurry to put out. Uh, we don't have silage to make, we make it in the field, we bale it, we wrap it, that's it. So as far as I'm concerned, the summertime consists of moving two electric fences every day. That's it. That's all I do, is move two electric fences every day. The cattle walk through, there's no chasing of cattle or anything in my system whatsoever. After about two to three days, once the cattle go into this system, they get to know very quickly that when somebody appears in the field, that means they're moving to fresh pasture, fresh bite and they immediately congregate at one spot. And all we do is walk up, wind back the electric fence, and they walk through into the new pasture. It's as simple as that. It takes, uh, to move 130 cattle in two groups, two groups of 65 a day, walk around, move all the electric fences, that's setting up for tomorrow as well. Uh, that'll take one hour a day if you walk around the system. If I do it on the bike, half an hour. But I, I prefer the walk and I get a walk through my stock etc and we don't bring the bike in. As far as the other part of the labour is concerned which is getting the cattle in, weighing them, selecting fat cattle for killing etc, we try and work within the system. So when the groups come close to the alleyways that take them into the pens, that's when we do our selection, that's when we do are taking them in, we do their weighing. Flexibility is definitely the name of the game as far as our system is concerned. What we try and do is we try and buy all our stock in during the summertime. We're buying in stores uh, and we try and buy them in in the summertime. That means we can put them into a grass field. Usually we put them out into a grass field close to the house uh, and what we'll have is we'll have an electric fence up in that field. Now the electric fence is not there to hold them back from going anywhere. It's just to get them used as they're walking around the field, they'll come across the electric fence and being inquisitive, they'll probably go up and nose it and hopefully they'll get a small shock from it. And that teaches them, you'll be amazed how quickly cattle get to learn that the, the white cord with the blue sticks hurts. Usually if we buy them one day, we'll leave, bring them home that evening, put them in the field with the electric fence let them get to learn overnight what the electric fence does and then the following day they'll move in with the other group and that's it.